Hey everyone, um, this is Arvind. I'm working as SD at JustPay. Uh, JustPay is a Bangalore-based startup uh, which was started around 2012, and we were mainly focused on payment systems in India. <coughs> yeah, sorry for my voice. I had a bad throat today. Uh, yeah, uh, we have been doing payments uh, uh, from last 10 to 12 years, and most of our stacks are mainly in functional programming. Uh, we use Haskell and your script at a very high scale. Um, so, so, so um, over the years, like using your script and, 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 and implementing a very huge data uh, code base, we have faced some issues while uh, using compiler. Uh, so like then, then we evaluated some of the ways to make the compiler better. And, and I'm going to share like, uh, some of our th thoughts and, and what are the changes we did and what are the changes we're planning to do and how can we merge this to upstream your script compiler. Um, yeah, if you have any queries, uh, I'm, I'm happy to take while the talk or, or we can meet uh, in the hangout after the session. Um, yeah, this talk is mainly about uh, your script compiler uh, 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 in, in cases of incremental. Um, so before even going further, I'll just give you some of the metrics uh, uh, at JustBase. Uh, one of the code base, not, not considering all the code bases, I'm considered, I considered one of the main code base that we use, uh, which handles around uh, 5 million transactions per day. Um, so the metrics are like, uh, we have like almost uh, 2.5 lakhs uh, lines of code and, and every time a developer does a build, it will take more than 10 minutes and uh, we have on an average 100 devs working on the project uh, um, on, on a day, on an average. Uh, so, so this is this this was the agenda uh, all the way. So earlier it used to be like this, like when we say pulp compiler, pulp build, um, it used to take like you can just go out and uh, grab a lunch and come back. So your pulp build will be ready. Uh, so now with the incremental changes we did, now it's like okay, you do a pulp build, maybe you can you can get a chance to go and uh, grab snacks. Uh, the next thing was like the future that we are planning and, and, and some of the ideas that uh, on the implementation were like, you just do pulp build and no more, like you're not going anywhere. So you have to be stay hungry and uh, stay foolish, I guess. Uh, so, so like considering main use cases, right? Uh, when, when we are working on any project, uh, some of the major use cases would be like adding a new functionality um, that would be considered as adding new functions in functional programming language. And second thing would be changing some values. Uh, maybe uh, you want to try building out with uh, different values in UI or, or different environmental variables or some constants you want to switch to. And, and something else would be like, uh, you want to do some debugging. So you want to add some logs, uh, maybe maybe comment out some logs to, uh, sorry, comment out some code to make sure that uh, uh, which part of code is taking uh, uh, more time or, or a perf analysis or even uh, understanding where the bug was introduced. Uh, see, considering these use cases, like uh, uh, this is one of the main code base that I was talking about. So ideally, first time compilation takes around uh, 4,365 seconds. Um, and, and let's say I made a small change, which is nothing but uh, I have updated my default version from one to two. And then my compilation time took around almost the same. It's, uh, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm compiling every time to almost 37 minutes or, or around that time, uh, 37, 98 seconds. Uh, so, so ideally the thought was like, when we are making these kind of changes, why does it has to do the compilation like how it does for the first time, right? Uh, from this from this pain point and from this thought, uh, we have started working on the optimizing compiler. Uh, so you can even see uh, how the CPU was behaving. I mean, it's taking all the cores and, and the memory is also high. Um, and, and and that's the reason why I said like when you do pulp build, you just go and grab a plunge. So it's gonna like take take a while. Um, another another inter interesting thing that we observed was like uh, when I even don't make a change, right? Uh, sometimes this uh, some of the some of the IDs make this crazy auto save, even though we don't change anything. Or you might have commented the line and uncommented the same line, or you might have removed a uh, extra lines and all, right? So uh, that's what I considered as no change in the code. Even then, um, the compiler took almost the same time. Like um, no, 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 um, 
no more of an intelligent system which says that hey man see you didn't really change any code i'm not going to compile the code versus hey i i have seen some some uh, the file has been changed the the modified time has been changed i'll just literally recompile everything uh see okay now i'm going to talk a little about uh, a principal thought um uh, of mine and, and mostly that we followed just pay so one of the principal thought is like we always try to attack any problem with uh, 80 20 so the main idea itself is that uh, Uh, can we find that twenty percentage of effort that can be solving eighty percent of the use cases? And see, so this is this is the one of the main reason why this compiler was. Uh, we kind of found only few places where we really need help, or or it takes most of the time of uh, from developers. So that those are the main problems that we focused on, and those are the main problems we fo uh, we solved with with more or less a twenty percent effort. To be honest, it's not like uh, we have considered all the scenarios and. And and it, it's gonna be like uh, like like so good at all the scenarios, but we have considered most of the scenarios that developers use and uh, which we added also in the use cases part. And in all those cases, we have put twenty percent of effort, uh, minimal um, uh, minimal changes that we can do to the compiler to to get the maximum of the benefit. And this is one of the uh, way we work at Jasper. We'll always try to find any eighty twenties and and try to uh, if you see the metrics here. um it's like uh, you can solve it 99% of the problem with just 24 24% of your effort so like this is something always we 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 try to uh, find out and and solve the problem more or less uh, very fast away uh so this is the first thought that triggered to me when 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 we were actually trying to understand like why the compilers are taking time the very first thought that triggered to us was why 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 do i have to compile when my function was not function signature was not even changing um so even before answer before even coming to this point right we were asking questions like what do you mean by compilation so what are we really saying when we say compilation is it doing a type inference is it uh, is it generation of uh, whatever the back end we support the javascript python php anything right is it what exactly do we say by build and how much of uh, who is taking how much of uh, time right and in that we have noticed that when the function signature was not changing ideally you don't have to um do the type inference for all the dependencies right like um this is one of our first thought and, and we tried to evaluate that using uh, some of the changes uh, so if you observe uh, we did a module like we have a module uh, which have a function called add5 and i'm trying to import that module in a, another module called y and when i have I have made change in module X, saying that uh, I have just switched the X plus Y with Y plus X, Y Y plus X, and uh, then 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 we have realized that module Y shouldn't be recompiled ideally, right? We don't want the module Y to be uh, recompiled because uh, because the type inferences are no more required, right? Because add five is always an int to int, and module Y using add five won't have any issues. Um, yeah i mean uh, these are some of the metrics uh, that i that i like after making this one change where uh, when a when a function signatures was not changed we don't want to recompile all the dependencies with that one change we could able to bring down numbers like on the left which are very high 37 and all and uh, we we brought them down, down to 10 seconds in the same way when there is no change in the code maybe you you move the you move lines um um maybe you commented and uncommented the same line then and all it won't even take it these numbers are again uh, the numbers on the right side are more of more or less uh, using a stop word so um, um because because there is no time command i could do uh, in a watch mode um, but but yeah so these are more or less the numbers that we that we were able to achieve now with a with a very simple change uh, that i explained in the previous slide um yeah I, i'll just give you some of the implementation details um what we actually did Uh, so, say to 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 solve this problem, right? Like what we said was like when we are actually parsing and when we are actually um, um, uh, trying to build a, a particular file, we actually build a hash map um, which will have a function name and the function signature. So every time you make a change and you try to compile, we we again build this uh, name and uh, function signature hash map, and we make sure that nothing has changed. Let's say if a particular functions. Function signature has changed. That's when we will say, okay, go and recompile. Like I can't uh, give any advantage, but let's say uh, for any particular function, the functions 
type signature has not changed then we can simply say that hey man see you compile yourself uh, but don't expect or don't tell your dependencies uh, to compile them right uh, so that's how we uh, uh, majorly solve the problem uh, see one of the main concern uh, to be honest till now is uh, the cpu and the memory which uh, which we started working on we, we we kind of figured out a couple of ways to make these changes and uh, uh, try to use less cpu or memory uh, but but it's still in our implementation so i can't really give out numbers as of now but but to be honest it's right now um, good enough to heat up the laptop so this is still a concern uh, from 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 the compiler that we are using um so we did a release uh, so people can find this release in npm packages um, uh, under the name hyper and pure script but as of now we released only for the four versions uh, which are mainly used at just pay so we, we have very uh, old code base that even still using 0 0.11 so we have only these um, four versions but but we are planning to add, a, add add for 0 0.15 or the latest versions also and we hope like before any new releases we will try to uh, bring these changes into upstream if anyone is interested uh, they can they can uh, get these old versions which i mean i can't help out if it if someone is using 0 0.15 as of now but if you have any code base using these versions you can try out the compiler using the npm package or if not you can uh, visit just base uh, github uh, it's, a, it's a pure fork of uh, pure script uh, repo and and we made changes on top of that so so ideally you can even observe what kind of changes we did and maybe some more suggestions like um, uh, 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 like any, any 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 suggestions regarding uh, the changes that we did and the way we did uh, also any people have any other thoughts regarding um, the use case versus this 80 20s that we can do early and and, and try to come up uh, try to achieve some higher numbers or higher advantages we are we are happy to uh, here and 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 there was also uh, there was also a post on this discourse uh, regarding this and 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 we, we are happy to like uh, interact with folks and we are happy to uh, speak with more folks to get more uh, inputs regarding uh, regarding this compiler and see if there are any more changes that we can done or if there are any issues that, that are being faced by people or or yeah uh, more or more or less in that way uh, uh, see, as I mentioned, um, till now, this is one of the main change we did and we were able to achieve the numbers that I shown ago. Uh, but but there are uh, there are other um, thoughts which we were which we were evaluating and also started working on it. And they seem like giving uh, even more benefit and, like, uh, and also also helping out in uh, many more uh, use cases. One of them is to build a function level dependency. Uh, so if you observe like in the previous um, in the previous explanation, uh, what we did was like we we we, we said if a, if a particular function signature doesn't change, then only you don't recompile. But uh, if a function signature changed, we will simply said uh, go and recompile the dependencies. Um, but ideally, let's say a, a, a module imported uh, a module imported a function, and that function is not being used or or it being used, but uh, uh, it's it, it, it's really not changing the function signature of the current module. So example could be, uh, let's say we have a X module and a Y module. X module have a add five function and Y module imported that add five, add five function and uh, somehow we changed the add five function type signature. So ideally we say go and recompile Y and we don't reapply the same logic on the Y and we simply say re, re, recompile all the dependencies. Uh, ideally I mean, the better way could be uh, you 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 consider why now, and since add five signature has changed, uh, the, the the you again look at all the functions of y and see if if the functions of y uh, functions of y's add uh, signatures has changed or not. If not, uh, don't recompile all the dependencies, but recompile only if, in, if only if uh, y function y y file function signatures are changed. So this is something we were evaluating, and looks like most of our use cases are like this. So even though some of the util function type signature has changed, I don't need to compile till the main, um, mostly because the util function type signature or the function uh, whose, whose, uh, whose signature has changed is mainly being used by um, uh, um, uh, more or less only for by few, fun uh, few modules and we wanna compile only them. 
and then we reevaluate the same logic and on the change modules uh, evaluate whether uh, those function the, the functions in those modules like type signatures has changed or not um, yeah I, I'm, I'm i'm taking a question so sort of ask like what about the inline functions um, uh, this is true i mean this is this is one thing that we observe uh, when there are these inline optimizations the ideally we have to recompile and 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 re, um, and generate the javascript code but uh, as we notice like most of our code is not doing any inline optimizations um, so that's one of the main reason that we uh, were able to use this compiler but yeah this is this is really a um, this is really a right I mean, right question where uh, if any inline optimizations were done by the compiler we can't really uh, uh, avoid recompiling the dependency modules um, yeah, see, this is something we were evaluating and trying to solve the problem in the more general way, not just uh, uh, not just like uh, saying that oh, see, in JustPy we were not getting any inline function, so we'll just use use this compiler. But uh, we we were trying to look at we were actually evaluating the PureScript compiler. We are seeing where, where is there any way we can actually disable the inline while we are doing the while we are using this compiler, and maybe for the final pulp build uh, maybe or or the or the release build, right? You, we can add a flag saying that it's a release build, and then we will just remove the uh, uh, the, the optimizations, and we will simply say, uh, "Hey, just go and compile everything and generate the proper uh, output." So yeah, it's it's a it's a genuine question, and this is something we have evaluated, and and and, and it's a known issue. Uh, but but as of now, and since we are doing this compiler for very time, as of now, we didn't see any issue or uh, any bug. That, that got introduced because of the inline uh, inline, inline concerns. Yeah, uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, back to the functional level dependency graph. We just want don't wanna. Um, yeah, we we don't wanna go with the file level, but we wanna go with the function level and and, and build the graph and uh, only the function signature change. We build the modules which are dependent on the function, not not like okay, I imported this file, so I'll simply go and uh, recompile that file. Uh, other than this, like there is another thought uh, which is for first time compilation, um, but but this is mostly uh, I'm not sure like uh, how well it is useful for a general audience. But but considering a company like us where we have around hundreds to 120 devs work on average every day, and 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 make new features, make new releases, we we thought we can actually use something like IPFS and maybe share the output folder uh, across us. Such that uh, our our first time compilation also won't take much uh, time because it's always like this, right? Like when the code is ending up in a bit bucket, it's being pushed by one of my friends or one of my colleagues. So ideally, if I could just like ideally, if I could just create a tar file of the output folder and get it into my laptop, I can use it. So we thought like maybe why not IPFS and and the PureScript compiler itself can uh, using that git commit hash, it can look at the IPFS network and if the output module is fine. Uh, output module it found it can just bring it down if not it can uh, it can do a simple compilation as as it does right now so uh, again as i as i mentioned i'm not sure like uh, is this really useful for the general audience but but if you're a company and you have like a good enough number of people and you make changes most of the time and you see uh, a lot of uh, new branches and new features that you always do um, i would say this is something that uh, we uh, yeah, this is something that can be majorly useful um, uh, because like uh, as i as i shown shown it on the screens earlier the first time compilation is something is still a problem and it takes around yeah it, it takes like huge amount of uh, time of devs and which is not like um, uh, which is which is a, one of the ma major hindrance that we're still facing facing but uh, we were seeing if, if ipfs can be evaluated and and maybe uh, maybe add the uh, commit level based uh, uh, output output bringing into the system by using IPFS network is something we we were looking at but we are not completely sure. Okay. Um, yeah. See, other than this, like uh, majorly at JustPay, we we work on functional programming and and we build products of uh, we, we build products of payments at the scale of India and and most of our stacks are uh, running in Haskell and PureScript and even Rescript. So we were one of the major company who uses types and uh, who 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 gets the uh, uh, 
uh, functional programming at, at to the scale of uh, India and, uh, and, and, and into the production directly. Um, and as I mentioned about the 8020, this is one of the things that we always uh, like uh, trying to figure out many 8020s in doing the task. See, uh, as, uh, if you observe even the peer script compiler, it's not like uh, uh, we have considered all the all the scenarios and we have come up with a complete 100% working compiler, but it, it, it kind of solves 80% of the problems and, and it helps a lot of our developers right now in-house. Um, and, and they could able to re, uh, make releases faster. They could able to uh, push code faster. Otherwise, like it usually takes an hour or two uh, for, for any person to like make a change. Uh, if there is any bug found, it takes around two, two hours uh, for our developers to make a change. Maybe, maybe add more logs, uh, uh, go through the code, the compilation. Again, you make some more changes, compilation. Again, you make some more changes, find out a bug, come up with a solution and push it to production. It takes around uh, two to three hours on an average, but, but it kind of dropped into less than five minutes uh, because, because, because of the use cases that we usually have. But, but there are scenarios, uh, as I mentioned, if we have to change the function signature or adding a new functionality, um, or, or, or updating the dependency graph, or is it a first time compilation? We are still at we are still at a, a, a issue level where uh, we have to recompile from the first time. It, it does take a lot of time, and and as the code base increases, at the as the code increases, we kind of seeing uh, we kind of seeing this compilation is actually going exponential, not just linear, uh, because earlier when we have very less number of files or less number of modules. It used to be like very linear, not increasing or not taking much time. It, it kind of went from five to 20 in a very, very fast way because, because we are just like working, we are just adding more features, more features. And, and suddenly we just went to this 30 minutes, 40 minutes compilation time. And uh, that's become a heavy, high endurance for us. Uh, yeah, I mean, true, I kind of have a bad throat. so. If, if 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 you have like if, if something was not clear maybe you can ask questions so i can i'm happy to help uh, but uh, sorry for my voice i i'll just had a bad throat today so thank you arvind